Out of your bed, out of your, out of your shampoo, out of your, out of your rivers of living water, out of your, out of your oh yeah, living water. Welcome to the Men of Integrity, men that rescue men and women. We are delighted that you've joined us for a journey through the Word of God. I have to tell you about Matthew 4 and 4. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Call a neighbor, call a friend, and tell them the Men of Integrity is on the air, and there is a word concerning you and your family. We're delighted to share with you that we are in the middle of Holy Week. Amen. All right. It is a time of celebration. Last Sunday, we celebrate the triumph entry of Jesus Christ into the city on Palm Sunday. Glory to God. We'll be getting ready for the Good Friday experience. Glory to God. And then on Sunday, it's the resurrection experience. If you have not made plans already, Pastor Apostle J. Edward Fish and myself would love to have you to join us in either one of our services. Uh, let's give the addresses and things of, uh, of your resurrection celebration. Yes, uh, well, of course it's gonna be on Sunday at 1130, and it's gonna be at 801 Industrial Avenue, Coppers Cove, Texas, Saint Center. Praise the name of the Lord. You can't, watch this here, you can't miss it. Praise the name of the Lord. And we'll be there celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What about Good Friday? Good Friday, well, I'm gonna be out of town in Houston, so <laughs> I would say that uh, you can attend Bishop Shaw's <laughs> church. He'll be there for Good Friday, praise the name of the Lord. Amen, you can join us Friday night, amen, for a life-changing experience as we celebrate the Good Friday celebration, and then on Resurrection Sunday, which is March the 31st, 10.30 a.m. You don't want to miss this great event. I'm telling you, it's going to be life-changing as we celebrate and talk about the resurrection of our Savior. Aren't you glad that he rose, glory to God, and given you the opportunity to rise as well? So again, we want to personally invite you to either one of our services on Resurrection Sunday. Hey, All man. right. The Word of God now is found tonight in Deuteronomy 28 and 6. And here's what your record says. Blessed shall thou be when thou cometh in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goeth out. That's good news. I want to talk to you tonight about this dominant thought. You are going in, but you are coming out. Apostle, the promise of God to the people of God is found in Hosea 6 and 2. After two days will he revive us, and in the third day he will raise us, and we shall live in his sight. The problem with most folks is that they have not studied their Bible. Mm -hmm. They do not understand or know the promises that God has spoken concerning them and their families. So on the first day of adversity, they faint in their minds. Mm. They believe, glory to God, that because of adversity, God has forgotten about them. But the record of truth says that you are going in, but you are coming out. Well, praise the name of the Lord. God is certainly a good God. And um, the Bible says that if you faint in a day of adversity, your strength is small. Watch this here. God is going to allow adversity to come, but that's part of God's training program. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, we say in the secular world, no pain, no gain. Praise the name of the Lord. But watch this here. But God, if God afflicts us, the psalmist said he afflicted us in faithfulness. And so God is in charge of our development. Um, but our development is not the same as the way of the world. 
And so uh, we got to read our Bible to find out how God does things. That's you right. The problem is, is that uh, we don't know how God does things. And so when we um, uh, experience things that maybe are just not conducive to what we we've thought about, we think that it's not God or we think that um, 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 God is not blessing us. But on the contrary, uh, Paul said, watch this here, uh, the work that he's beginning us, he will perform it yes, sir. until the day of Christ. <laughs> absolutely. I, absolutely. You have to get it into your mind that you are going in. We are going in, mm -hmm. but we are coming out. That's right. The mentality that one must develop before they go in is Deuteronomy 28 and 6. Blessed shall thou be when thou goest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Listen, put this in your mental roller decks. Amen. Whatever God said in the beginning is what God is saying in the end. In the middle is just a testing and the trying of your faith whether or not you believe God that mm -hmm. he's going to take you in and that he's going to bring you out. David said it best. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will feel no evil. It has been decreed and declared that I'm going in, but I am coming out. So why believe that God has abandoned you when you encounter any type of trouble? The truth of the matter is revealed in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 8 through 9. Mm -hmm. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not cast down. Forsaken, but not destroyed. Mm -hmm. Apostle, God is with the people of God that has been born again and believe and follow the word of God. Yeah, and you know, in Romans the 8th chapter, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing and he says in the eighth chapter, verse 35, he says, what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Watch this here. But watch this here. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. You're so absolutely right. But it's a lack of knowing God. It's a lack of trusting God. Mm -hmm. And all of that comes from a lack of being in his presence. The text promises that whatever we go into, we're coming out blessed. Glory to God. Listen what the record says. Amen. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Come Hebrews on now. 10 and 23. Mm hmm without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. Right. The promise is the propensity to, to demonstrate his power, the power of him that has promised. We must come to know enough about him to understand that his word does not fail. Did you get that? His word does not fail. Matthew 24 and 35 says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 1 and 12. Then the Lord said unto me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my word to perform it. Finally, Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So you have to understand, beloved, that there are some things, apostle, we must go through, but we are coming out. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, you know, um, Jesus <laughs> went through. And uh, if Jesus went through, of course, we would went through too, because the Bible says he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Yes. Now, if the son of God um, had to go through, then of course, we're not greater than the master. And we are servants, praise the name of the Lord. And we've got to go through, but we're not going through by ourselves. He said that, he said, lo, I'm with you always, even until the end of the age. And then, of course, uh, the father said uh, that uh, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. So you're not going through 
by yourself. In fact, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. That's right. So you, 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 uh, uh, he's right there to take you through. Praise the name of the Lord. He's already overcome and you can overcome too. Absolutely. Not only are you not going in alone, but you're going in with an identity. <laughs> Your identity is that you are blessed mm -hmm. and no one can curse what God has blessed. No one can undo what God has done. And he says, blessed shall thou be when thou goest in mm -hmm. and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Who can reverse the words of God? You have to understand that who we are and what we have does not exclude us from going through. The record of truth declares in Isaiah 43 and two, when thou goest through the waters, I will be with thee through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Mm -hmm. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. You have to understand that we are going in, but we're coming out. Amen. We're going in blessed, but we're coming out blessed. Now watch this. Daniel had a perfect spirit, but he went into the lion's den. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew boys had unwavering faith, but they went into the fiery furnace. Going in, apostle, and coming out is a part of life. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And then again, we're not going in by ourselves. Praise right. the name of the Lord. Right. And the Bible says we are more than conquerors through him. So we're going in with him. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. We're not only going through in our attitude, but he said, put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So we watch this here. So even though he left us here, Bishop, praise the name of the Lord, he's given us power over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall hurt us. Absolutely. So the first thing we want you to take home with you tonight is that God has given us authority. That's right. God has given us the authority to become his children and to exercise dominion over every situation. Mm -hmm. We have to do something. We just cannot say that we have and not exercise this authority over that. In John 1 and 12, but as many as received him, mm -hmm. have you received him? Mm -hmm. Then to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now he gave you the power to become, but what have we done with what he has given us? We have the authority. Amen. We definitely uh, have the authority. Praise the name of the Lord. And uh, I mean, just <laughs> so many scriptures, but I'm thinking of one at this point. He says, the works that I do, shall you do also an even greater works because I go to the Father. But all you have to do is watch this is believe it, praise the name of the Lord, receive it and exercise it and it will be for you just as the Lord Jesus told us. Praise the name. So we got his word, Bishop. Yes. We got his word. We got the spirit of God and then we got a myriads of angels around us. And so we're not left here on our own, praise the name of the Lord, but we're left and passing through here with great authority and great power. The question I want to know tonight is why are you still crying mm. and not confronting to conquer? When God has made promise to you, first and foremost, that he has blessed you and that he has blessed you and spoken over your life, saying to you that you're going in blessed and you're coming out blessed. Mm. And he has said to you that I have given you authority. I've given you identity. The record of Revelation 1 and 6, and has made us kings and priests unto God mm -hmm. and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever, amen. Priests have access to his presence and king make decrees that heaven fulfills. Now, not only has God given you authority, but the next thing that you need to wrap your mind around is, is that God has anointed us. Mm -hmm. So here we are, apostle, we have authority and anointing. 
2 Corinthians 1 and 21. Now it is God who established both us and you in Christ. Mm -hmm. Listen of the record. He anointed us, placed his seal on us, and put his spirit in our hearts as a pledge of what is to come. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know, I'm, and I'm back into Romans 8, it says, 831, it said, if God be for us, then the question is, who can be against us? Absolutely. We as believers mm -hmm. in this hour must embrace the Word of God. That's right. We have to go back and open that Bible. We have to go back and sit under the teaching and the preaching so that we will be empowered with revelation. When you get revelation, you can now operate in knowledge and wisdom and spiritual counseling. You can operate in Isaiah 11 and 2. This is how the Holy Ghost works. If you want to know how the Holy Ghost works, go look at Isaiah 11 and 2. I know we shout. I know we speak in tongues. I know we dance in the Holy Ghost. I know we do all of these things, praise and worship. But there is an operation that the Holy Ghost does in the believer, and it is found in Isaiah 11 and 2. Now look what he says in Isaiah 10 and 27. And it shall come to pass in that day mm -hmm. that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulders. You have to see results. In order for your faith to grow, in order for your trust to expand, you have to see results. Here are the results. In that day it shall come to pass that his burden shall be taken off your shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed. You should see some physical evidence of your authority and your anointing. Yeah, praise the name of the Lord. And when we look at the New Testament, as they were waiting on the Holy Ghost to come, and then when he came, these guys were different uh, uh, men then because of the anointing. Yes. And Jesus said, ye shall receive power after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And that word power is the miraculous. And so it moves us into the things of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Not just, not just mere men, but men that have received power from on high. <laughs> You're so absolutely right about that. The difference is the promise of God's word mm -hmm. that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Mm -hmm. We cannot play with this thing. Come on. There is a force of darkness that is warring against our minds, warring against our soul and spirit, trying to get us to self-destruct. You see it every day. Young people are self-destructing. Old people are self-destructing, glory to God. Satan is on a rampage. It is going to take, amen, the power of the living God spoken into the lives of our loved ones to be able to destroy this yoke that is up on them. This is why we have to understand that we must go into these places and declare the wonderful works of our God. You've been given authority to do it. You've been anointed to do it, to tear down the high places, glory to God, to challenge the things of life. Now watch this. Not only has God given you authority and mm -hmm. not only has God anointed you, but we must have the audacity. <laughs> Are you listening? The definition of audacity is boldness, courage or confidence of a kind that other people find shocking. Are oh, you listening? The apostle, they were shocked when David came out to face Goliath. Everybody's shaking in their boots. Glory to God. But God had trained this man in the wilderness to fight the bear and the lion mm -hmm. because he knew that greater challenges were going to come. Mm -hmm. And you have been through things in your life already. 
that should have given you the courage to understand that when greater challenges come, God is going to be with you. Why? Because he has blessed you. Amen. How has he blessed me? He has anointed me and given me authority. And now it's up to me to have the audacity to face the challenges of life. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And if we don't do that, Bishop, we're going to limit God in our lives. That's why we hear him telling Joshua, he said, be strong and very courageous. Praise the name of the Lord that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein for then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to have courage and we're going to have to believe this word of God that God will do what he says he will do and he will, but we got to do what God has told us to do too in order for all of this to mutually work. So God is poised. Watch this here. And he has the power and uh, uh, he has the knowledge, but watch this here. He needs our obedience. Praise the name of the Lord and yes. our courage and our trust uh, to do what God has called us to do. You know, in the moment of adversity is when Satan is made to be a lion and all the powers of darkness are proven to be ineffective. When you look at Daniel chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, mm -hmm. our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. You got to know that regardless of the situation and the circumstance that you go into, that God is able to take you in and to bring you out. Listen at their testimony of faith. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, mm -hmm. that we will not serve God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Let me bring this to 2024. Someone needs to put it into the atmosphere and demonstrate your audacity that I will not bend or bow, mm -hmm. faint or fall out, doubt or accept defeat, because it is on record that blessed shall thou be when thou goest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou cometh out. It's time for the people of God to believe God's word, embrace God's word, and in the day of adversity, we need to stand strong and prove the fact that God's word is true and that God is alive and in control. Yeah, and that's, and that's really our job. Uh, Bishop in Romans 12 and 2 it says be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We've got to stand strong and courageous and show the world that the God we serve, watch this here, is able and will deliver and he's alive and he's well. Absolutely. This is the purpose for the power of prayer. Your Bible says that in the tough times, under certain circumstances, you ought to go boldly to the throne of grace mm -hmm. and let your request be made known unto God with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. We're not going destitute. We're not going as though we have no hope. We're going to the source, glory to God, which has decreed, promised, and is faithful to keep his word. We have to do what Psalms 118 and 17 says. We have to declare, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have to speak God's victory over the situation. God said to Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. And then Abraham messed up. Glory to God. When it had a son, glory to God, with Haggai, and God says, put Haggai and his mama out, glory to God. Amen. Put them out, glory to God. Then he had another son, and then God says, take your son and sacrifice him. 
but God had a plan. Mm -hmm. But it takes faith to exercise God's plan. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, you know, uh, and that's one of the reasons why he did call Abraham, because Abraham eventually got it together. And the Bible says he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but, but was strong uh, in faith giving glory to God. And so if we're going to give glory to God, we're going to have to be strong in faith. And our faith is our victory that overcometh the world. You are so right about it, but apostle, we are broken. Mm. We are shattered in so many places. We are uncertain about so many things. The enemy is coming in like a flood and there's so many of us that have never cracked open that Bible in a long time to find out what God is saying concerning our situation. But the question again keeps ringing out. Will you be made whole? You have faith in some areas, but you are broken in other areas. You have belief in certain things, but you have so much unbelief in other things. But in the day of adversity, we must be whole. We must know, un, amen, wavering that God's word is true. Look at what the record says in Psalms 121 and 1. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even and forevermore. There is no reason why we should waver about anything when we have been made whole. That doesn't just mean physical sickness but we're sick emotionally, we're sick psychologically. What does that word sick mean? Is that everything is not functioning the way it should function, there is something happening here. And so fears and phobias come in when certain things happen in our life. But when you have been made whole, when you are standing in divine authority, a divine anointing, you do have the audacity to stand firm on God's word. Psalms 1 and 3 says, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Mm -hmm. It means that all actions directed by the word, providence and grace of God shall be crowned apostle with success. Yeah, and, and again, you're telling us where to go. We got to go back to that word. And 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. God has given us his word, and watch this here, uh, and God watches over his word to perform it, but he needs for us to perform it, to obey it, to bring it in our lives. And Proverbs picks it up, and it says, those that find the word is life unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. You're so right about that. My brothers and sisters, get it in your mind. Mm. Open that Bible. Yes. Pray. Go to worship. Sit under the teaching. Mm -hmm. And understand that all of us are going in, but we are coming out. Wow. We're going in blessed. And we're coming out blessed. And we're going to declare that our God is a deliverer. Our God is a savior. Our God is a healer. Our God is a way maker. Our God is a miracle worker. If you want to hear more about this God that we serve, join us in any one of our services. And you are definitely going to have a life changing experience with the men of integrity praying for your miracle. Out of your bed, out of your, out of your, out of your, out of your.